You're listening to the Coach Hodge and Bank Show on the Coaching Culture and Athletics Radio Broadcast Network. Sit back and enjoy the show. The views and opinions discussed in this podcast aren't necessarily the opinion of the host or Coach Hodge and Bank Show on the Coaching and Culture Athletics Network. Hello, hello. Hey, you, you, you know what? It's, uh, it's, it's an amazing day, uh, you know, to look at December 31st, 2019, to look in the years past, you know. And, and, and I don't necessarily think, you know, we, we, we should look at the years past, so to say, as, as, as well as, you know, to look into the future. You know, what, what does 2020 have to bestow? Uh, my name is Chuck Banks. Uh, I, I am a coach. I am an author. Uh, I am a teacher uh, within a small district here in Southeast Iowa, <clears throat> and you know what? I made it my mission, uh, you know, about a year ago. I, I, I came up with this idea that we needed to change the mad culture present in athletics throughout the United States. And and what I'm talking about here is 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 I'm talking about a growing epidemic where officials, uh, coaches, teachers, for that matter, you know, are, are are leaving a, you know, so, something that is that I truly value, and that's to lead the the charge to develop, uh, you know, quality, upstanding citizens, and and find young men and young women out there, you know, as they as they go into adulthood, and you know, t- tonight's show or today's show, I guess, <laughs> I'm, uh, I guess I'm going live here at nine thirty six in the morning. And that's okay because I have a lot to uh, to get through today. This again will be the last show of the year. Get it? <laughs> you know, I, I know it's corny, but I but I am from Iowa. Uh, today's show, 2019, you know, is is basically we're we're gonna have four facets here. The first part <clears throat> is coaching culture and athletics. What's next? A look ahead, you know, at 2020. A little bit about who am I, you know, to share that. Part two will be, uh, I, I, I read an old school article that one of my confidants, Evan, uh, Coach Evan Swanson, you know, shared on his Facebook page. It's been shared on Twitter. It's a very good article on old school coaches. And I think we need to, we, we need to take a look at that and, you know, and, and possibly discuss some of the articulations there and some of the ramifications that are taking place due to a change in the way we are coaching athletics or the way that we're teaching or, you know, or parenting or whatever. And, and, and it's a great article, and I, I, I can't wait to share that in part two here. The, the third segment, I, I'm going to talk about my book, um, the, the Mad Culture Present in Athletics. It came out in the summer. It's done okay. Uh, you know, I, I haven't had a lot of sales, but I, I don't think a lot of people – truly know what's in the book. It, it isn't just a gripe, uh, you know, a, a tearing apart of, you know, the culture that we have. It's it's about, you know, discussing, you know, some key issues that I that I think are important, you know, and, and basically the first aspect to change a, uh, a, a culture is to discuss, you know, what what it is we need to change, you know, and, and this book offers some some concrete guidelines to improve the relationship of the culture in the entire aspect, not just in, you know, from a coaching standpoint, but it's also comes in from a parent, an administrator, uh, all stakeholders within a culture, including the, uh, the organization's community and, and all that good stuff. So, so that'll be part three, part four, we're going to take a look at the playoffs, uh, the, you know, the NFL, and you know, I, I I have been excited this year. You know, uh, my my team that I've loved since I was a kid, you know, is is going back to back into the playoffs. And I'm excited to you know uh, to to basically decipher this this crazy thing called the NFL. And you know what, the NCAA this year, 
you know the the championship championship series. Uh, you know, you know my my Oklahoma Sooners look like the fourth best team in the country. <laughs> Actually, it didn't even look that high, but um, they they struggled uh, against a very good LSU uh, club, and then you have the Ohio State and uh, uh, you know uh, Clemson game. Which, by the way, Clemson looks like they're going to three peat. Um, you know, and, and for a lot of reasons, but their defense, you know, it's not just Trevor Lawrence, but their defense looks out of this world fast. And that, you know, that that's going to be a great game. You know, it's a great story. You know, LSU's quarterback, um, you know, you, if you believe everything that you see on social media or on the news, um, not a lot of teams wanted that quarterback. And you know what? He's, he's looking pretty doggone good. But you know what? We're, we're getting ready to go here to part one. Uh, what's next in the coaching you know, culture in athletics? You know, what, 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 do we, what do we hope to do? The goals for 2020? And of course, who am I? We'll be right back. All right, so so I'm back here for part two. You know, the coaching culture and athletics. What's next? Hey, look ahead into 2020. I'm I'm going to guess that we'll have season two of coaching culture and athletics uh, with myself, Coach Swanson, Coach Bryant, uh, Coach Kozarich, uh, You know, Coach Doherty. A lot of coaches out there. You know, and and there's a lot of topics. You know, that that, that we can cover. Uh, so I think 2020 is going to be a pretty pretty exciting time period. But also on uh, on on our list, uh, you know, I have uh, created the Rev Chuck Bank Show. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, you know, I was ordained this year, so I'm excited about that. But the Rev Chuck Bank Show is going to be a little bit of everything. You know, like uh, and and not not just all you know feel good stories, but stories that I think needs to be told. So that's going to come in, and we are looking for other uh, broadcast partners. You know, to bring in here to podcast. If you're excited about that, you know, hit me up. And we can talk about that. So 2020, um, you know, 2019. When it, when I reflect, uh, we we have so many great people, uh, you know, and, and so we we we've had so many great uh, folks, uh, you know, that that have been a part of season one. And you know, we we we'll, we'll discuss about it, you know a, a few of those here. Let me dig them out here. Uh, you know the coaching and culture and athletics. This is episode twenty-eight for this year. That's that's pretty good. Um, you know, o- over the course of the year, uh, you know, we we we've had the pleasure of having on multiple coaches, and multiple of these coaches actually uh, coached in the t- you know different various degrees of state playoffs, this, that, and the other. Uh, you know, I look back at the pilot uh, that, that took place on June nineteenth. It was a fourteen fifty-one or fourteen minute fifty-one second segment. And in this pilot, I kind of discussed my book. I discussed, you know, kind of what, uh, what, what we want to look ahead. And it went over pretty good. And then, and then we got into, uh, the nitty gritty. You know, I, I, I look at a lot of these guys, you know, coach, uh, coach, you know, from coach Tyler Bryant, uh, you know, you know, coach, uh, coach Swanson. I, I, I put on a lot of local coaches early trying to feel out, to, to, to see, you know, where, where we were headed. Had Coach Marvin Nash out of Texas. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Coach Nash. I have seen, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, Marvin's been up for like Teacher of the Month, uh, this, that, and the other. You know, congratulations on a great, great year. Coach Kelly Spann, uh, I, I know his team uh, made a late run in the Texas uh, Texas football playoffs. I hope to get uh, Kelly back on to discuss some baseball, you know, that, that'll be coming up, uh, you know, b- before long. And, and again, I'm kind of going through here, uh, you know, a few of these past episodes, this, that, and the other. We, we had the, uh, the pleasure of having uh, Chip Baker from TSC. Uh, he's done some great things. Coach Doherty, uh, Coach Kozarich, Coach Carter. I uh, had Chris Dewar on, and, and I saw Chris at, the, uh, at a basketball uh, event that, uh, that, that my team, you know, had the opportunity to play in, in, in Illinois, and he, he'll, he'll be coming back on. Kier Riggs, Scott Jones, Alexis Kozarich, 
just so many, so many, uh, so many there. You know, Coach Zach Kelly, uh, Robert Harmon, uh, uh, you know, Shane Wyrather, a lot of the other sports. So we we've had the you know the 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 time to 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 go through those things. And and again, our mission statement here at CCA is not going to change because uh, there there is still a lot of a uh, lot of things to uh, you know to take place. The mission statement is to end the mad culture present in today's athletics. That's important. Vision statement is realizing the full potential of a proactive coaching or the, you know, realizing the full potential of proactive coaching on athletic culture in the United States. And, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to continue uh, to push that through. You know, a little bit about myself. I, I, I've been in education now for quite a while. Uh, almost two decades, and you know I've coached uh, for just as long. And you know my my love for the the just the coaching environment is is unmatched in many regards. I have a good time. I have a you know it's not just having a good time, but I, but I have a great time. Uh, you know, coaching up and you know not only doing the X's and O's, but establishing a relationship uh, that you know with 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 my young student athletes. You know to achieve. Uh, Post secondary school setting, and I and I think that's important because sometimes sometimes we uh, we, we we get drawn down uh, in in certain components, uh, you know, where where it's us, it's 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 me, you know, but before the team when when in coaching, I didn't get into coaching for me, uh, I got into coaching to change the world, and you know I'm I, I'm still going to push through with that, but a look ahead, you know, more podcasting, maybe another book. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, let's see. You know, looking back into 2019, it was full of trials and tribulations, folks. Uh, you know, I didn't get to see my oldest daughter as much as I would like, but I got to spend a lot of time with my other two children. Uh, over Christmas break here, I did get to spend a few hours with my uh, my grandbaby, Orion, and my new grandbaby, Owen. And that, that was a great three hours. I, I certainly wish it would have been much, much longer than that. But sometimes it is what it is. We're going to come back here in just a few minutes, and we're going to check out, you know, in segment two, Old School Coaches. This is a great article, and I'm excited about it. That that music, you know, it's free bumper music. I I, I want to make sure that I don't get the, uh, you know, get our brand in trouble for you know stealing any uh, uncopyright or you know copyrighted music. This, that, and the other. But anyway, this this column happened to be published uh, May twenty second, two thousand nineteen. So it's a little bit older, but it it was shared again today, and it's it, it's one of those uh, that, that I think is important to look at. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I'm I'm looking through here trying to figure out who wrote. Okay, it's Chris Metcalf. Yeah, uh, he's a regional sports director for Batavia Daily News, uh, and and I just want to read through here because there there are a lot of great components uh, w- when you look at it. Okay, and and he writes, I miss the old school coach. A few of them still exist, but not nearly as much as they did 15, 10, and even five years ago. From my perspective, it seems like parents, school boards, administrators, superintendents have crushed many of these coaches' souls and have forced several old school style coaches uh, into stepping away uh, from their coaching profession and into extinction. I definitely miss the old school coach. You know the coach I'm talking about, the type of coach that holds in uh, each and every one of uh, his athletes to a higher standard, the coach that instills accountability and discipline into student uh, into each student athlete. The coach who preaches high character on and off the court. The coach that doesn't mind getting a little loud if he needs to. The same coach uh, that, after raising his voice, puts his arm around his athlete and tells him uh, how proud he is of their effort. And, and I see this as pretty uh, one-sided, uh, you know, as far as, you know, to a male coach. And, and this goes for both coaches, both sexes. He says, I miss that coach a lot. We all do. You see, what's... Uh, You see, that's what the parents and many school administrators don't see. The soft, genuine side of these old school coaches. 
They only see the yelling and nothing else. They they don't see the genuine relationships these coaches have with their athletes. There's nothing more genuine than a player-coach relationship. It's a real connection. Sometimes it's not always seen on game nights. Instead, it, uh, it, it could be preached in practice on a Thursday night, well after the kids have gone home from school. An old, old school coach doesn't have a fixed timetable on when he preaches accountability. Uh, he does that by instinct. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to look at these things and, and, and talk about, you know, the difference between, uh, I, I guess, uh, and, and, and again, I, I, I might be missing the point on certain components. Um, because sometimes I think old school coaching uh, get, gets a bad rap. And, I'm gonna, and, and the author continues, uh, what, what many of these kids do today when they get home from their, uh, from their coach being tough on them is immediately tell mom and dad how much they dislike their coach uh, always being tough on them. What these uh, kids don't seem to get from the same mom and dad is telling their kid, uh, listen to your coach and respect your coach. Now, I, I go back. I, you know, e- even when I played several, several decades ago here, you know, as, as a player, I, I did the same things. You know, I used to I used to go home and complain. You know, my my dad, Gerald Banks, God rest his soul. You know, the old he, he was the old sheriff. He was kind of rough and tough. This this that and the other. But he'd tell me. He says, "Hey, you need to figure it out. You need to work harder or whatever. You know, communicate with your coach and and do those sorts of things." And that's you know it was kind of put to rest then. You, you didn't really see you know the the parents getting in, get get into a coach's uh, face, and we'll, we'll we'll discuss the mad culture stuff here in a little bit. Unfortunately, they uh, and he continues here. By the way, uh, unfortunately they they don't uh, let's see they don't get the same type of support many of us used to get from our parents back in the day. Remember, this is me. It's all about me. You know, society we live in today. I, and again, it's not all doom and gloom, folks. I don't see it totally like this, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you do, you do see it quite, quite a bit, you know, especially I look back in my AD days and, you know, and, and, you know, I, I've seen it over the years in different seasons and he continues, coaches aren't getting the support from the kids, uh, homes like they used to. Yeah. I remember complaining one time, uh, to my dad that my coach was really hard on me. He yells, uh, at me more than the others. I said his response, don't worry about him being hard on you. Worry about uh, when he stops being hard. And again, I think there's a difference between uh, being at it for yourself, uh, you know, and, and and showing that aspect versus uh, truly being there for the for the student athlete. <clears throat> and again, when when you look at it from the proactive component, because a lot of people, you know, they preach, well, you know, you have to teach everybody a little bit different, but but we don't do that in the classroom, do we? Well, I I, I guess I do, but. Anyway, that uh, I'll, I'll continue here. That all that all made sense to me. He was simply telling me to appreciate a coach that was passionate and driven for me to succeed. And if if he did stop being so hard on me, there would be a reason for concern. And you know, the author says that's old school coaching. I can't tell you how many highly successful old school coaches we've lost in the past ten years for various reasons. While several have retired, others have been either forced out by parents, constant complaining, or hidden agendas by school administration to get rid of them. And, you know, that's that's taboo. And, I, and I'm not knocking any school administration for any of their decisions. I'm just sharing this article. And he continues, I, I know several coaches off the top of my head that have been let go in the past year because they were too hard on kids. And parents were complaining so much that administrators forced that coach out uh, just to make the parents happy. Sad but true. I also know a few replacement coaches that have stepped in with hugs and pats on the back for everyone, and their teams are struggling with those same parents that are probably begging for the old school to come back, uh, not only for the victories, but for the old school values that he took with him. This is happening this spring. One particular team comes to mind, he writes. And he continues, "How, how about the many other coaches that are afraid to be tough on kids in fear of any repercussions that could come their way because they saw another coach in the building get pushed out. That happens more than people think when a coach is afraid to hold his players accountable because one of the parents is a teacher, administrator, or just a loud parent who complains regularly. He continues, Nine out of ten times when a parent complains to the administration about a coach, it's about playing time. There are parents out there that would rather lose 15 games and see their kid play a lot of minutes rather than win a sectional title and have the kid 
see the field or court, uh, you know, a limited amount of time. He continues, uh, instead of having kids work harder to earn their playing time, some parents feel entitled. That's the sad truth, uh, you know, with many of today's parents and administrators. Not all of them, folks, and 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 not, you know, uh, again, this is this this is just uh, you know a one aspect, you know, to look at. Am I saving grace? I don't know. May, maybe. How can you know the, the the writer continues? Now, I I will say this: many schools today have great leadership with their athletic director and superintendent, more so than don't. But there are some districts out there that cater to parents and would rather uh, and would much rather have fewer complaints than more discipline and accountability with their coaches. In fact, some districts have no loyalty to their coaches. Thankfully, not many, but some. I'm personally glad that uh, that, that I work in the current district that I work in. I'll just throw that out there. Uh, the, the author continues, it doesn't make sense to me. Ask any consistently successful coach why he has been so triumphant over the years and he will point immediately uh, to the loyalty of his, the administration and parents. I guarantee it. I'll guarantee you that as well. And if you ask uh, any of those old school coaches, former players, to describe them, they would all say the same thing. Discipline, values, high character, and accountability. That's old school. I think, uh, folks, I think there's a big difference between you know, coaches that are buttholes versus coaches that are truly you know, trying to uh, promote and, 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 and create a highly uh, disciplined working environment that, uh, that, that tries to foster and, and improve, you know, a, a culture. There's a big difference. Like, like myself, if, if, if I was to take over a program, folks, uh, it, it would be one of those things where it, it would all be open, but, but there would be accountability. Uh, you know, that's just the way it is. And I, and, and I, I guess I was coached with old school coaching. Uh, I have a little bit of that, but I, but I would say uh, there, there's definitely a mix. I mean, even if you look at the old school coaches in the NFL, right, like Mike Dick uh, uh, and, and all of those uh, types of coaches, there, there is a difference between an old school uh, coach that, that ripped his players all the time versus, you know, like the, the, the coaches that were players coaches, but they were still old school in many regards, and I think it's important uh, to, to throw that out there. So that's part two. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed that. I did share the link uh, for this article in its entirety if you'd like to check that out. Uh, again, it was shared again today. But it, but this article was from Chris Metcalf, who's a regional sports director for Batavia Daily News. Uh, you know, and, and I believe it's, uh, it's Genesee, Wyoming, and Orleans County. Uh, but, it, but, it, but it was a great article, and, and I wanted to make sure, you know, I, like I said, I read it. Uh, I thought it was important to share today, and, you know, de definitely take a look. So we're getting ready for part three here. We'll be right back. I didn't mean to blast your eardrums out there, but here, here we get into part three. Part three today is The Mad Culture President in Athletics. What's the book about? You know, it's not getting many bites or reviews on Amazon, this, that, and the other. And, and I'm not just trying to beat uh, my own drum here, but this is a book that uh, could, could potentially uh, open your eyes a little bit as, as to what's taking place. And it also offers, you know, some, some insight on how to fix it. You know, I'm not just uh, throwing and, and, and preaching to the choir on many regards to this. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm also talking about some pretty keen aspects. And on page two of the book, I write this, and I think, I think it's important to look at this here. We are seeing an alarming trend at all sporting events from peewee leagues all the way up to professional sports. Fans fighting one another because they like a certain team. Umpires being threatened because fans do not like their zones or calls. Professional athletes making statements like, I, I will put a dent in your skull, uh, and, and all other nasty facets that seem to be a growing trend in athletics across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, the mad culture is alive and well in our country, and we must change the culture to keep our events thriving and well. The health and well-being of our children are at stake. At stake. I said sake. Okay. And... You know, that's 
that's something that, you know, I, I put down pen to paper and I thought it was important. My goal is to change the culture one soul at a time and, and join me is, is basically what I write there. You know, uh, the mad culture present in uh, sports athletics, there are several things to look at. There are several parts of the book. Uh, a lot of it's uh, personal experience because, you know, we're, you know we're, we're, we're in an aspect and I've had multiple coaches, you know, that have coached me. I've uh, worked alongside, you know, a, a plethora of coaches. You know, I've, I've not only been a head coach, I've been an assistant coach at various levels uh, from Pee Wee Leagues all the way up. I've also been an activities director. I still coach uh, today. So, you know, as an assistant, uh, working to get a head coaching position again, uh, you know, as my kids have grown up, now it's time for me to get back in, uh, back in the saddle when it comes to that. But, you know, learning from growing from the ugly experiences, the mad culture, I explain, I explain what it is, the mad parent. The mad coach who is a parent, the lawnmower parent, and you know what? There's there's a new thing called the snowplow snowplow parent, but but I discuss that in the book a little bit. The culture, the good and the bad. Uh, you know, the self fulfilling prophecy that we see in in many regards when when someone takes over a program, and if if there isn't that support with your administration and your parents, and and the culture isn't all running and jiving at the same part, that self fulfilling prophecy will not be good. Uh, tr- I discuss travel ball, uh, officials in turmoil because we are in, we're we're in deep doo doo when it when it comes to uh, having enough officials for the, all these sanctioned events. Uh, the non negotiables, uh, the you know I, I discuss that uh, extensively. Personal coaching philosophy, and I discuss a positive reinforcement strategy uh, that is CCA approved. And then, uh, and then I discuss, you know, the coaching culture and athletics, what what we can do, you know, to to change things and 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 help out. Anyway, uh, you know, I I, I could uh, what 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 I'll do is I'll read uh, I'll read a little bit of chapter five, and and if you're interested in this book, you can purchase it through you know through me or you can go on Amazon. I, I did put the Amazon link on there. I make a little bit more money if you uh, purchase from myself. You can email me at coaching and culture athlete. Uh, Coaching culture and athletics at gmail.com, or you can message me on Facebook, Chuck Banks. Let me just read a little bit. T- today, like uh, many other days, I'm trying to continue to learn new value in my life. I spent the day with the family uh, and the overweight, uh, overweight yellow lab that will always be my best friend. The rain is coming down, and this, uh, this is one of my only days off over the past few weeks due to the plethora of baseball games I am coaching. Uh, again, with one of my buddies and former player, Tyler Bryant. We spend most nights, like other coaches, scratching our head and enjoying the competitive nature of our athletic athletes. Last night, uh, we were on the losing end, but our boys played uh, with their hearts out and learned a valuable life experience. The team was able to come together after the game, their heads pointed downward uh, with sweat beating up just below the brim of their hats. They were disgusted uh, with, with the concept called defeat, like many times before, I offered up my sound advice I could give them uh, with my positive guidance and nature. I told them uh, they, they all needed to look at uh, or they all need to look all of us in the eyes and understand the meaning of family and win with dignity and yes, boys, we lose with dignity as well. Far too often the game of summer uh, loses its zealous of love. There are times when, when we take losing so seriously that we often do not find the time to learn and grow from each contest. And, you know, I, I think that's important because too often us as coaches, we, we get into these things, the, these wins and losses, and, and, and we see them in, in, in a lot of different uh, paradigms. And, you know, some, sometimes we have to accept what is and, and move forward. Anyway, that's, uh, that, that's the book. Uh, you know, hit, hit me up if you're interested. Um, I, I can off, I'll also offer... Uh, you know, if you order more than one, I'll, I'll take some off there. So anyway, The Mad Culture President in Athletics, it's a book that came out in June. It kind of follows along with our podcast here, and it's got a lot of good stuff. Part four uh, will we'll be coming up here in just a few moments, but I'm going to be playing a song here uh, that my son wrote. Take a listen. I'm not going to play it all, but take a listen. Thank you. 
Anyway, I'm back. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I, I, I was just amazed. Uh, you know, look, look at you now. Anyway, part four here, guys, is the NFL, uh, the playoffs, uh, you know, looking at the contenders, uh, you know, I, I just, just like each and every one of you, I'm sure you've, you, you've taken a look. You got the 14 and two Baltimore Ravens. Uh, you got the, uh, you know, the 12 and four Kansas City Chiefs, the 12 and four Patriots. So you have the usual suspects. Um, if, if I'm looking at uh, if if I'm looking at the playoffs, you know I, I I look at that NFC and I think the NFC is wide open. Um, you know it, it's it, it, it's pretty crazy. The AFC I you know there there's going to be some good games, uh, but man I, I I just see you know so you know more competition in that NFC uh, component. But anyway, let's let's look at the wild card games for next Saturday. And uh, we'll we'll take a look at who who's going to be playing uh, you know these teams that the, the following week. Uh, the first game is the Bills at the Texans. I, I have the Bills probably beating the Texans by a couple touchdowns. That's 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 going to be one of those games. I think I think the Bills are ready. I think the Texans are a little bit weaker in in many regards when you look at uh, some of the other teams. Uh, another interesting AFC matchup is the the Titans at the Patriots. Um, you know, I'm going to go against my better judgment. I'm going to take the Titans in this one. Uh, so I'm going to see both visiting teams in the AFC are going to advance. And then that will put uh, the, the Titans going to Baltimore and the Bills going to Kansas City. But So that that's the AFC thing. So yeah, and then you go to the NFC, the Saints at the Vikings. As much as I love the Vikings, I just don't think they can beat uh, Drew Brees and the Saints. So I, I have the Saints winning that one. Then you have the Seahawks at the Eagles, and I've got the Seahawks winning that one probably pretty easily, pretty handily. And then the following week, uh, you'll have, let's see, I, I believe it's the Saints will be at the Green Bay Packers, and then you'll see the uh, Seahawks at uh, San Francisco, uh, the rematch of one of the greatest games, that you know, greatest games uh, at the end of the regular season that I, that I could possibly see. So that's that's pretty much all I have, uh, you know, this afternoon. But, you know, lo- looking back on 2019, uh, you know, it was a tough year. It was a tough year in many regards. But uh, but I, I'm just, I, you know, I think I think the good Lord that, uh, that, that I'm able to hit into 2020 and, uh, you know, to see what uh, 2020 is going to behold. And, you know, the CCA will be a year old in June. So it'll be exciting to see how much we've grown, this, that, and the other. But, uh, you know, my name is Chuck Banks. I, I'm a coach. Uh, I, I, I'm a teacher. And I'm trying to change the mad culture present in athletics one soul at a time. Uh, lots of love, guys. And Happy New Year.